Hi everybody, my name is Matt and I'm an independent filmmaker. Welcome to Famous Motion Pictures where we will be discussing filmmaking, finance, investing, disruptive innovation, and all of that good stuff. So today I'm going to be talking about why I am never submitting to another film fest. Nope, nope, that's not right. Today I'm going to be talking about why I am never paying for another film festival submission again. So with that stuff out of the way, let's get right into it. So you may have noticed before that I didn't actually say I was never going to play another film festival again. What I said was I am never paying for another film festival again, and there's a big difference. If I were invited to play a film festival for free, or I was approached by a film festival, maybe a programmer, or maybe a director, or someone else from a film festival, or from a film organization, and I was given a waiver, and for those of you who don't know, a waiver is basically a free coupon to submit for consideration, I would absolutely consider it myself. But what I won't do is pay money for another film festival submission ever again, and in this video I'm going to tell you why. So I've been thinking about this for a while now, and as you probably already guessed, I feel that film festival submissions Screenplay competition submissions are simply not the best use of my money. As an independent filmmaker, I'm really strapped for resources. I finance my own films. As a business owner, as an investor, I really need to start thinking more carefully where I'm directing what little funds I have. And to me, screenplay competitions, film festival submissions, this really isn't the best use of my money. When I'm paying money for something, I really expect to get something in return, whether that's a physical thing or whether that's some sort of service. The problem with film festivals and with screenplay competitions are they guarantee you absolutely nothing in return. For those of you who don't understand how film festival screenplay competitions work, there's usually a series of deadlines. There might be an early bird deadline, a regular deadline, a late deadline, and an extended deadline. And with each deadline, the submission fee that you have to pay becomes prohibitively more expensive. So you might start out with a $45, $50 submission fee, and that could go all the way up to maybe $150. That could get very, very expensive very, very quickly. And depending on where your submission falls kind of in this series of deadlines, you can end up spending hundreds if not thousands and thousands of dollars. This goes for screenplay competitions as well. You're kind of just sending your money out into the ether. If this kind of transaction sounds familiar to you, it's probably because it feels very much like a casino. What you're actually paying for is something called hopium. Kind of the same feeling that you get when you buy a lottery ticket, right? When I buy a lottery ticket, the experience that I have leading up to the actual draw is a lot of daydreaming. What would it be like to win that kind of money? What would it be like to have that financial freedom? What would I do with my time and what would I do with my wealth? And as a filmmaker, when I submit to film festivals, I have that same type of hopium experience leading up to it. I have a lot of dreams about what it would be like to play a big film festival. Some larger film festivals are very prestigious and elegant affairs and they have a red carpet and the press and the media are there and you get your name and your film and the trades and it's a very very exciting time. The problem with all this though is compared to the amount of films that are submitted to any given festival really only a small percentage of those films are accepted and the rest are rejected. You either receive some boilerplate type of email that says how excited they are for this year's festival and they're so sorry that they can't accept you but they can only pick a certain amount. Screenplay competitions are very very similar in that you work very hard on this script and you have these dreams and aspirations. You're hoping that someone is going to discover you whether it's an agent or manager or production company and you're gonna get a high rating on one of these aggregate sites and all of a sudden your career is gonna blow up. The chances of that happening are so incredibly slim. It is a very much a lottery ticket mentality where you're essentially buying this lottery ticket to 
uh, feed off of that hopium all the way up until the point where you're rejected from the thing. And I have a very poor track record of being accepted into film festivals and having any success for, through screenplay competitions. So as an investor and from a financial standpoint, these really aren't the best ways to allocate the resources that I have into building a career. I made my first film when I was 17 years old and I submitted to one film festival and it got accepted into the feature category. I was 17 years old, and at the time of this recording, I'm 34 years old. And since that official acceptance, when I was 17 for my very, very first film, I've been accepted to just one other film festival, despite having submitted to dozens of other festivals for all the films that I've made since I was 17 years old. And if you do the math, those submission fees start to really add up if you're looking at anywhere from $25 for short films to maybe $50 for an early bird. Um, I've even submitted some late deadlines in the past, which I really shouldn't have done. That's a lot of money that I have spent over the years. That's, that's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And I have nothing to show for it. Let that sink in for a moment. I have absolutely nothing to show for it. I would have had a much better time if I had taken all that money and gone to a casino and maybe played some blackjack and maybe played some roulette. Maybe I would have even won some money back, but at least I would have the memories of that. Like at least I would have paid for the memory of having a good time with maybe friends or family than just clicking and clicking and clicking and receiving just a lot of rejection. That's essentially what it comes down to is you're paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars to probably receive a lot of rejection in return. And I have recently discovered something very, very interesting. Sit down because this is going to blow your mind. I have made the absolute amazing discovery that rejection, despair, and broken dreams can be found for free if you're willing to look hard enough. Did I forget anything? Now, it's definitely not my intention to sit here and crap all over film festivals. I mean, it, it kind of is, but it's not at the same time. I understand that there's probably a lot of people watching this video and they're saying, film festivals have worked very, very well for me, or screenplay competitions have worked very, very well for me. And that's totally fair. This is really coming from a place from my own experiences. And because the acceptance rate for film festivals and screenplay competitions are really so low, I imagine that there are far, far more people that are probably feeling similar to the way that I feel. A lot of festivals are not-for-profits and they're really there to try to help filmmakers, to uh, springboard filmmakers' careers, to help them find an audience, to really kind of launch them at the early stages of their filmmaking adventures. It's really not going to be accessible to everyone. And though there are a, a lot of smaller film festivals where your chances of acceptance are a lot greater, some smaller festivals don't offer you the same exposure as larger festivals. That being said, if you get into a larger festival as a smaller filmmaker with a smaller film, it's like winning the lottery. You couldn't be more excited. This could be one of the best things that ever happens to your career, and you could be launched to stardom. The problem, though, is it takes even more money and more resources once you get into a larger film festival to not get lost in all the noise. If you're lucky enough to get into one of these larger film festivals as a smaller filmmaker with maybe a smaller film, that is very, very lucky of you, and you should be very, very excited. The problem, though, is there's going to be a lot of larger films there that are going to very easily eclipse your film and it takes further resources such as marketing dollars and hiring a PR rep to really make that experience worth your time and worth your money. If you go and nobody knows about your movie and there's no buzz and you aren't able to get your, your film and your name into the trades and have uh, the town talking about you, then it's really kind of a lost experience. So just getting into a larger festival all of a sudden requires even more money and more resources to really squeeze that opportunity for everything that it's worth. And if you're not able to do that, then you're really at risk of not being able to find your audience and not being able to stand out from the crowd. So it's almost like every single step 
through submitting to a film festival. And then once you're there at the film festival, you're constantly needing to separate yourself from the noise. This is really just thinking of the whole thing strategically, as opposed to having that lottery ticket mentality where maybe if I'm lucky enough, or maybe if my film is good enough, I will be launched to stardom and I will have the career that we all were kind of promised from these success stories of 90s filmmakers such as Edward Burns and Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino and Christopher Nolan and all these people that found this enormous success in the 90s through the independent filmmaking movement that really doesn't apply to the situation today and to how competitive and how busy and crowded the space has got. You know, it's funny, I recently reread one of my favorite books on filmmaking. Actually, I shouldn't even say that. It is my favorite book on filmmaking. It is Robert Rodriguez's journal called Rebel Without a Crew. And if you haven't heard of it, you should look it up immediately because it is the best book and it is the most inspirational book on independent filmmaking you'll, you'll probably ever read. It is a series of daily journal entries that Robert Rodriguez made uh, in the early 90s when he was making his first film, El Mariachi. So anyway, I recently read this book and when I was finished, something occurred to me that I had never thought of having read this book. Now I've read this book like 10 times by now. I got this book when I was 18 years old and to this day, it is the only book that I have sat down and I read the entire way through without stopping. I've never done that with another book. I've always read books in you know chunks or chapters or whatever over a period of time. This book, I sat down and I was totally captivated and I have read this book probably a dozen times since I was a teenager. And the last time I read this book, I realized that Nowhere in the entire book is a single mention of the internet. I believe the book takes place over 1991, 1992. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So it wouldn't make sense that there would be uh, an accessible internet to filmmakers like Robert Rodriguez at that time. I was only a few years old in 1991 or 1992, so like I, I don't recall what the stage of the internet was like. I just remember getting it later. So the idea that these filmmakers broke out and had their careers launched through the kind of the independent filmmaking movement of the early 90s and they went to festivals and they were very successful. I really grew up on these stories, on these fairy tales, if you will. And these were really my sources of inspiration. They were the templates that I was trying to follow earlier in my career. And I wanted to follow in the footsteps of these people that I admired and, and they did good work. And it was really the only way that I knew how to be successful was by following the career trajectories of these filmmakers that made it very, very successful. The problem with that though is the landscape has changed so much, even just in the past few years. Some of these festivals receive hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of festival submissions, of paid submissions from uh, your peers and colleagues as filmmakers, only in this case, you're actually competing against all of these people. And it makes it very, very difficult. Another problem is you don't really know what festivals are looking for. A lot of festivals kind of structure their annual events around some sort of theme. And the problem with this though, is that theme isn't really communicated to filmmakers. You know, it's like kind of an internal thing. So maybe the theme for this particular year is disruption. And you're like, yeah, I have this film about disruption and that's terrific. And then maybe you have a better chance of acceptance than someone whose film revolves around a different theme. You don't know what the theme is. You don't know what the festival is looking for that year. And that makes it really difficult to decide if your film is even right for that festival because the festival can be maybe a science fiction festival. Maybe it could be a horror festival. And that's really great, especially if your film is a science fiction or a horror film. It's, it's a genre film. Then you're able to kind of target those genre categories. The problem with that though is you still don't really know what the theme is. You don't know internally what they're looking for in terms of a programming schedule. Perhaps you can make friends with a programmer. Perhaps you can inquire. You can go those extra steps to kind of make your lottery ticket a little bit more viable. But at the end of the day, it is just a lottery ticket. And unless you have some kind of inside scoop into what the festival is looking for, you really don't have any other advantage. You know, you've made the best film you possibly can make on the budget that you had accessible to you. And now you're just kind of tossing it in the wind and, and, and hoping that it's picked up by something. That is not a very good strategy and hope is not a strategy, which is another reason why I've decided to pivot away from this idea of forking out money to film festivals and screenplay competitions as well. This has really forced me to 
think long and hard as not just a filmmaker, but an investor of how I'm gonna allocate my resources in the future. How I'm gonna take what little money I have to make my films in the first place and ensure that I'm able to continue making films prolifically. I wanna make a lot of movies. Movies are my passion. And when I'm taking that kind of finite amount of resources, whether it be financial or whether it just be my time, I no longer as an investor and even kind of as a filmmaker see film festivals and screenplay competitions worth my time and my money. Just thinking back to Robert Rodriguez's book and the idea that there was actually no mention of the internet whatsoever, that was really the only path to success. That would probably have been one of the few paths to success in terms of finding distribution as well. You would play a film festival and hope that you find distribution out of it. To me at least, this seems like a very antiquated system now. I'm really gonna be diverting my time and my resources away from this sort of mentality where I'm really uh, fueled by hopium and by this idea of good luck and maybe good timing and all of those things that don't really add up to anything. If I'm gonna spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on anything, I actually wanna see something in return for my investment or my purchase. I wanna be able to hold something in my hand or I wanna be able to say, I propelled my career forward in a more meaningful way. Perhaps I'm spending that money on marketing my films instead of hoping that I get into a film festival. If I look back at all the money that I've spent over all the years on festival submissions, I could have really used those funds as a war chest for marketing my current feature films. And that would be amazing. That would have been the better decision. And I'm just realizing this now. And like I said, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Perhaps you're finding enormous success through screenplay competitions and through film festivals. And if you are, that's truly great. I'm genuinely happy for you from one filmmaker and one screenwriter to another. If you're getting into film festivals and you're getting into screenplay competitions, that is fantastic. And you should be very, very proud of yourself. That is an achievement. and. Obviously, not a lot of people are able to do that. What I've been doing in the past hasn't been working for me. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And that's kind of how I feel about screenplay competitions and about film festivals at this point in my career where I've just been kind of doing this thing over and over and it hasn't yielded any results. So I'm now looking for different avenues to find an audience. And I'm now trying to structure my filmmaking decisions as investments. And I'm really trying to wean myself off of the hopium and this kind of mentality that the film industry is really built up, especially for independent filmmakers. At the end of the day, everyone needs to do what works for them. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because this type of strategy is not working for me. So anyway, everyone, let me know in the comments what you think. I was really excited to make this video. This is kind of a new trajectory for me. I know that might be a little bit controversial. It's probably going against the grain since film festivals and screenplay competitions are so popular and so prevalent in the filmmaking community. I now kind of see it as a legacy path to success, a very antiquated way of trying to get your film out there. I haven't been accepted to a film festival in over 16 years, so I seriously doubt that I'm going to miss them. So thanks everyone for joining me. Please like and subscribe if you thought what I had to say was at all useful to you, and I will see you in the next one. There is a really great documentary made by a filmmaker named Paul Osborne. It is called Official Rejection. The documentary really explores the value and the role that film festivals play. It features uh, Kevin Smith, and The Office is Jenna Fisher, who made a feature film back in the 2000s. One thing that I thought was really interesting that Jenna Fisher mentions in this documentary is that when they were submitting their feature film on DVDs, they would uh, send blank DVDs out to film festivals and uh, see if anyone actually noticed. I guess it was like a little test to see if the programmers were actually watching. And she said if they didn't get a call from that festival, then that would be a good indication that they didn't even watch their movie for consideration. So uh, this thing is full of really, really cool uh, interviews and anecdotes. You should definitely check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.